Okay, so let me let me give you a quick uh, sort of intro, um, and and then I will uh, give you a demo, um, sort of deep dive into some of the finer details about the product, and then I'm happy to answer any questions you uh, you might have. Um, so the the whole thesis behind coding is one coding is becoming mainstream now in the UK. For example, coding I think has, is mandatory in elementary school, uh, all the elementary schools now. So we all understand that coding is an important skill. Uh, the big question we are trying to answer is, what is the best product to get kids excited about coding, especially the, the, the when the kids are very very young, a five year old, six year old, seven year olds. Um, so what what one of the idea we have is one of our inspiration is Lego. Uh, Lego as a tool, very simple, has has inspired a generation of engineers. Um, you build with Legos, you sort of you never fail with Legos, and this idea of sort of putting things together and your imagination to reality. And we're trying to figure out. Uh, we've been trying to figure out, and it also for the last two years, given coding is such an important skill. What is the Lego of coding? What would be the transformational product that will Gets kids really excited in a, in the most natural form. Um, so that, that that's that's how that's the genesis of of, uh, of of the coding product. What we have realized, the coding is effectively uh, giving instructions to a computer. And better coder you are, better you get at how do you synthesize all your instructions in a very meaningful way so that computers can efficiently parse them and execute them. So the coding is in some sense. How do we get a set of instructions, put them together in a very meaningful way? And this idea of putting things together, putting instructions together, is is the core idea behind Osmo coding. Uh, interestingly, putting things together maps very well to what, how you play with Legos. You put pieces together and you build a structure. And we try to replicate the same idea where we have these physical blocks. And I'm actually going to change the view for for a second. These, if you see these blocks. Um, these blocks effectively uh, have, are commands, and what's interesting about these commands is these are the most natural command. Uh, the game we have is a character on a screen. I'm going to move this. A character on a screen that moves, the character on a screen that jumps, a character on a screen that grabs objects, a character on a screen that um, uh, that's sort of making decisions. And character on screens are doing things again, 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 and so we have these very fundamental verbs. And what is interesting about them is these are very natural things for kids to understand, for all of us to understand. Um, so this is a jump. When you jump, in which direction are you jumping? So this, there's a lever here that you move, that effectively tells you which direction you move. It, it, it jump, and then it tells you how much you're jumping. Um, so the most fundamental unit of coding is picking a command. Changing some variable in this case, changing the which direction, the, the the red one if you can see in the video feed, and then you're telling uh, a computer how much to move. So now this become your simple piece of code. And what's really interesting about this is this is this is readable, it's very natural, and then you connect that with this button. That's a play button, and now this is the program you just wrote. And I'm going to uh, turn on the screen and give you just walk you through a couple of demos here. Um, here you will see there's a there's a character called Obi here on the screen. Uh, if you if you can see, yeah, come closer. Um, and and the screen uh, and and this character loves to explore and eat strawberries. Uh, that's sort of his primary uh, motive. And what we're going to do is we're going to make the character move on a screen. So if you see there's a strawberry here, it here's the character. The big question is. How do we program the character to get to this point? This is two up. So I'm going to take this command, which is walk. I'm going to make him walk up. It's already up. I'm going to make him walk twice up, and then I'm going to execute this program. So this is the most fundamental, and then you can see on a screen. And we of course try to make the process of moving and uh, and acting of obi on screen as much fun as possible so this isn't about coding but this is about exploring the world with, with obi uh, now you see something more interesting um, here you see that there's a lake 
and the strawberry on over there and now our goal is to make the hobby move here now if i do something very simple like i'm just going to make him move and let's see what happens so same as legos you are experimenting here um just trying to put things together so i i'm going to just move and suddenly you see that oh well you can't actually it's a lake and he fell into the lake uh, interestingly kids love this experimentation so you realize this was successful uh, what you can do instead now is you can actually make the hobby jump and uh, what happens in the jump is you can jump back across the lake and let's see what happens yeah so now you start realizing this idea of one there are different commands and you can you can customize these commands the second big idea is not only you can do one commands one at a time but you start putting them in a sequence a uh, sequencing is one of the most fundamental idea behind coding that you have set of instructions we put them next to each other so i'm going to make him move up then i'm going to make him move up again uh, jump and then uh, actually i'm going to make him walk first eat strawberry then jump and then go up and then i want him to do this for twice so i'm going to make him do this operation twice now this is a fairly complex program here uh, Okay, and then you press this button. Andy, can you can you hear? Uh, can can you follow me mm. in the process? Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, so what's really interesting is I'm now introducing the second concept of coding. Uh, there's four, that the four big concepts actually. The first one was the idea that you can have a command that you can customize. The second one was you can put them together. and the third one is you can repeat that now i'm actually repeating the whole thing that comes after this these are the three building blocks there's a the last one um, that i'll come back later actually um let me in the game um i'm oh, sorry uh in the in in the in the game there are uh a 20 different levels so this was one of them uh very early stage um the i just want to get you to a, a deeper level um in the deeper level what happens is you have more interesting mechanic for a player to exercise advanced coding skills or actually improve code skills so um i'm going for example uh, this level where now you will see that there are a lot of strawberries uh and there's a trampoline you can go and jump so i'm going to move him around actually um um this one is i want him to go on the right hand side uh five time then he's going to go that way and then i will try to make him jump let's see if he can actually jump back across the tree jump down uh maybe jin look like he can do uh um but nevertheless we're going to try and then i'm going to make him walk to the yeah i think he can jump and then i'm going to make him um uh, walk to the left uh i'm going to make it walk other thing that's happening here is as i am putting these commands together in real time i can see what the output is going to be without actually executing anything so that's another big idea behind osmo coding is this idea of experimentation just like legos you you try to put things together and if it doesn't work you try something else um there is no cost of experimentation and that's actually a big idea for us so now you see i i i i built a pretty fairly complex uh, uh program and now i'm going to connect them together and press this button which is going to execute oh he can't actually so as you saw in this case um uh, i he got stuck in a tree and he he couldn't do it now i'm going to introduce the the final sort of big concept from coding standpoint which is the concept of uh conditions um looping variables sequencing and the last one is conditional and it's a fairly advanced concept the idea is um so this is this button if you if you see if you try to do something and if you can't make that happen you have a different path to follow so in this case you want to go around this you put this a command but if that doesn't happen i want him to come back to where it started um so i'm going to put you walk to the left hand side 
maybe maybe five times. Um, and you, so this piece actually, um, if you, if you can see on on the screen, this is a fairly sophisticated program. It's simple when you look at it because you can parse this, you can see what each command is doing. Conceptually, it has two different part, uh, and uh, so I think I'm just executing here. So, as you can see here just now, is he 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 went on the right hand side, he got stuck to a tree, he came back, and that's a fairly advanced coding concept. Um, these the the crux of a game from a children's standpoint is this word that they are exploring uh, sorry this is the word they're exploring there are 20 different labels they go around and each part of the world is fairly rich in terms of what you can do uh, this is part of the world that you can change and they teach animals you can eat strawberries there's a pie you can eat pie you can jump in the river um, the idea is we want to build this naturally attractive and exciting environment for kids to explore. And the exploration is happening all through coding in a way that's super natural for children. Um, I'm going to switch the camera now uh, to, to actually look at my face. Um, and, and one of the things that we have, um, we have uh, huge inspiration is this idea of using uh, tangibles for teaching coding has been actually around for a long time at MIT research. MIT Media Labs have been doing a lot of research in this. Uh, Northwestern University has done a lot of research in this one. So there's a strong academic rooting on this idea of using hands to build things together is one of the most natural way for children to grasp the, the, the complex concepts. Um, our, the team that has been built actually has come from Northwestern uh, and, and these guys did fairly extensive academic research uh, the, the group uh, these guys come from on the most natural way of teaching kids coding um, things that makes it even more interesting from a academic standpoint is coding has traditionally been a purely a digital concept so trying to bring the digital abstract concepts into into the real world into the physical space into defining those verbs like walk and define this thing with change of direction. Um, th this is where, to me, is real innovation of Osmo is, uh, or the contribution of Osmo coding is, try to bring them to the most natural form. Uh, that's sort of my pitch behind what the product. I can keep on, uh, I can keep on demoing for next half an hour. There's so much more in the game. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> generally very excited.